Well, hello everybody, and happy almost St. Patrick's Day. I tell you, St. Patty's Day is tomorrow, and um, being Irish myself, I've learned don't rely on the luck of the Irish. Sometimes you gotta make things happen by yourself. But my name is Colleen Magnus, and today you are Creating with Colleen. This is my Facebook Live as I come to you every Wednesday at noon. Eastern time in Virginia here, and uh, we are going to make some wonderful cards today. I'm going to do a couple of them, so you're going to get a lot of inspiration um, from some wonderful sets. Let me just boot up here, make sure I'm on the screen. That's always like a good thing to do. So today, as I said, we're coming to you with cards for outdoors, coastal, um, Stampin' Up! just has so many, many wonderful products to feature the great outdoors. And I love creating cards with outdoor scenes because they could be used for everything, whether it's masculine, birthday, sympathy, they cover the whole gamut. So that's what we are going to do today. And I'm actually combining two bundles. One is from the annual catalog and one will be from the mini catalog. And I think you'll like them together. And the reason I'm also focusing on the annual catalog is because on March 23rd, our retiring list is gonna come out. And sadly to say, we are gonna have bundles that are leaving us. And I think the one I'm using will be one of those. So as people pop on, hey Sandy. As people pop on, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And then if you guys have any comments online, let me know. And I'm glad you're here with me, Sandy. Always love to see you popping up. So this is some of what we're gonna use, the New Horizons. And with the New Horizons, I'm going to show you the other bundle first because my cards pretty much focus on a lot of the products with the New Horizon. So right from the get-go, I love this bundle called Sailing Home. Now the reason I think this will retire this year is because it has been in for a couple years and they only keep the products for so long, but this has been an awesome set. You know, great for graduations, set sail in the directions of your dreams. Thanks. Let hope be your anchor through the storms of life. Amen to that. You're my true north. But again, just you could throw birthday, sympathy, anything you want. It will work. And I'm praying, y'all pray with me. I don't go into a coughing fit because for some reason this past week, my throat's been kind of scratchy. I haven't really been sick. I haven't felt sick. I've just sound like I've swallowed a frog. So it's actually better today, but you never know when that coughing fit's going to come up and take you out. Hopefully it'll be better soon. And of course it is pollen falling, but I'd rather it be a cold because I can kick a cold. You can't kick allergies. So anyways, the Sailing Home stamp set is right here and I love it. And I didn't make a cheat sheet for the dies, but on page 165 of the annual catalog, these are the dies that go with it. So let me turn to the actual stamp set and I can show you the one pieces that get cut out. Okay, so right here on page 51 is where the actual stamp set is. And as you can see, when anything is ever highlighted in a catalog like this with kind of this tan color, that means a die coordinates with it. So for the sailboats, a die will cut them out for your lighthouse, for these awesome words, and also for the anchor. You have dies to cut all those out, plus they always throw in a couple extra things in there that don't necessarily match the stamp sets, but I love when we have a die that matches the stamp set. So this is Sailing Home. Now, I told you you're gonna have lots of inspiration today. Let me share some cards with that Sailing Home bundle. And actually, it's not a bundle. They, they do sell the dies and the stamp set separately because it's been in for a couple years. So this is a bridge card that I made, gosh, maybe two years ago. And it's a lot of fun. It's basically a special fold, imagine that. But um, you can see, um, you know, just had general cards, set sail in the directions of your dreams. So this was one of them. Hey, Mary, hey. Um, Gwen, I've got people popping on just in time to see some good samples. Good for you. This is another one. Of course, Night of Navy and Crumb Cake always lends itself to any kind of a coastal card. 
So again, what's really nice is you also have a ship's wheel in there. So if you cut the ship wheel out of foil paper, that also makes a nice accent. Here we have um, just another one. I'm just gonna roll through these gorgeous coastal cards using the Sailing Home stamp set and dies. Here's another one. Here's another one. And here what was cute is they um, took some linen thread and just wrapped it around the anchor. I love that. Now I haven't made all these cards, but I have had them for so long, I really couldn't tell you who made them. But I do love them. And last but not least is this one here. And here, this was actually stamped on watercolor paper and then with just a blender, um, aqua painter, and some ink, just kind of smoothed over. So you could see that this Salem Home is definitely a great stamp set to have. And again, on March 23rd, the retired list comes out, and I'm not a betting woman, but if I was, I really think this is gonna be on that list. Sadly, sadly, but true. So hey, Mary, and hey, Julie, y'all just keep popping on. I'm gonna keep rolling. Okay, so what we're kind of focusing on today, although we're using both, is on page 42 and 43 of the January through June mini catalog. This is called the New Horizon Suite. Now, part of this has been unorderable because it has been so popular, but I just checked and the dies are in, so you can get the bundle. The paper is in, the stones are in, and the ribbon, this is the only thing not orderable, but it's coming in next week. So this way you can get everything in the entire suite. Now let me show you that firsthand. First of all, you do have the On the Horizon um, stamp set. So you have this here, really nice, some nice sayings. And then I have to show you in here because again, I haven't had my cheat sheet. I think as soon as I get a bundle, I need to go ahead and take the dies and cut everything out. But here for the dot dies, you have relax and enjoy your day, that wonderful, the beach fence, mountains, some wood texture, some houses. So a lot of great things to help you create the great outdoors. Next, you have this amazing designer paper, and I'm gonna go through it kind of quick. I've shown it before. But these scenes on the designer paper are amazing. So of course you have two sides, you have your front and then your back and there's 12. So that's actually 24 designs. So I will go through them really quick. This reminds me of Ireland, the great rolling hills. We have this. I love how there's like a um, scenery on the front, but then it's not on the back. So you could use that for any style of card but it's just gorgeous. It almost reminds me of like when we were on a cruise and you got up in the morning and the fog was on the water and it was just gorgeous. It was when we were in Alaska. So keep going, lots and lots of options. And I'm gonna show you a couple cards today because they were pretty easy to make. We, uh, we were, cre I was creating yesterday and then a little bit this morning so really, I could just spend days playing with this, this suite. But unfortunately, I don't have days. Only had some hours. So that's your designer paper. Then you get these really cool. These are called pebble enamel shapes. So these are actually like little rocks that go on your card. They're self-adhesive, but they're very thin. So they're not gonna add weight to your card or make them difficult to nail. And then last but not least, you have the cotton ribbon combo. This is Misty Moonlight and Petal Pink, which is absolutely gorgeous. And again, this today is non-orderable, but it says that it will be in next week. You know it's popular when you can't get it, so get it while you can. Hey, Doris, I'm glad you're here. Beautiful spring day, 53 degrees in Wisconsin. It is great in Chesapeake, let me tell you. We have had some nice weather and uh, it's overcast today, but it is beautiful. So on the cards that I made, I actually took some of those designer papers and I cut them four inches wide. So basically I just wanted to have a background of scenery that I started my cards with. 
So I just left it six inches also because when I was stamping these, I wasn't sure if I would be cutting it, you know, more off the water or more off the sky. So once I created my card, that's when I trimmed it down to five and a quarter. So when you cut all your pieces like this, that are the four inch by six inches, you're gonna have a two inch strip left. So then you have all these pieces that you can create a card with. So let me show you the cards that we are going to create today. This one here, very simple. And I have to apologize, I haven't done anything on the insides um, because I really had to focus on the outside. We sadly had to um, put my son's dog down yesterday. She was wonderful. She's best dog in the world. I know yours is too, but ours was also. And it, again, it was, um, it was hard to create during the day. But then last night, it was actually very therapeutic. So I didn't have time to do the insides. Uh, that will come later, but at least I have the outsides. So here, again, with the designer paper, I'm going to show you how to make this card. I'm gonna show you how to make this card. So I hope you packed your lunch. You're gonna get hungry um, by the time we get done today. I'm gonna to show you how to make this card. And this one, um, I was debating whether to put some words up here or not, but I didn't because sometimes I just like the scenery or you can leave the words off until you're ready to create. And then this one, I'm not gonna show you how to create, but it's very simple. That's that two inch strip that I was telling you about that you have left over from all of these pieces. So it's so easy to make two cards out of that one six by six inch piece of designer paper. And so here, I just stamped these the little reeds down here and the birds <clears throat> and the word breathe. I find we need to hear that word quite a bit lately. So um, anyways, that was a good one. So let me get started. I have taken pictures of all the dimensions. I'll put them on after we create. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to give you the dimensions as we go. So for this card here, you're going to need eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of Misty Moonlight scored at four and a quarter. And that is going to be your base. And I would use a bone folder, but Tyler Joe was up here playing yesterday. And at one point, I saw that her, uh, she had three of them, so now I don't have any of them. They're here somewhere. But this is your, your base piece. Then again, I took that New Horizons designer paper, four inches by six inches, because I'm going to cut it down eventually to four by five and a quarter. And then for the mountains, I'm going to show you a good way to do the mountains. You have a base piece, and then you also have, I call it like the white caps on top and you have the mountains. So let's get started. Again, nice and easy for this first one. When I put the mountains together, I like to use liquid glue. And I put it on, of course, this overlay piece. So here we have, I'm just gonna put some dots, and y'all know I am a big fan of the Tombow liquid glue, because you don't need a lot. It sets up quick, and it is very strong. Should my have my little um, craft and rubber mat here, but no telling where that is too. That's fun to play with also. So when I put this on here, I just kind of line it up the best I can. <clears throat> then I make sure it's all even. And I find whenever I'm using the liquid glue, even on the foil or especially on the foil, I like to take a damp paper towel and then I just dab it. Because this is going to get that glue. The glue dries clear, but I think you can still sometimes see it. So Plus, it helps you get it off your fingers. Um, but when I put it on there, it'll dry in just a minute. And it doesn't leave any glue because this is all very small to put it in there. But there's my mountains. So for my piece here, I'm just going to take my mountains. This is I love this one. I can make a ton of these cards. I'm going to take my mini dimensionals. I will put them on my mountains. And down here, just so my tip stays up also, I will cut one in half. So we have a mini, mini dimensional. Okay. Then I will just peel these off. 
throw them on the floor. Shows how productive I have been today. And then I can put this kind of wherever I want. So I'm just gonna put this across here. Hopefully I'm straight. It's, it's kind of hard to create when you're not actually seeing it. And then I like from the New Horizons stamp set, thanks for everything. So I will take this and I'm actually using Rich Razzleberry. It has, this paper has some wonderful colors in it. So lightly, I will just stamp, thanks for everything. And as I told you, you're gonna to have to trim this down, but I wanted the option of whether trim in the bottom or trim in the top. And since I do have a lot of sky at the top, I'm gonna leave this like this and trim my top. So I'll just take my cutter and this is going to have to be five and a quarter because this piece here is four by five and a quarter. So I'll just take this, go to line it up here at my five and a quarter. Trim that off. And my first card's almost done. So I will take my stamp and seal. And lay it on the top. And look how gorgeous that card is. And you just saw how easy it was to make. I don't know if anybody timed me, but I think I was under three minutes. Or if I was over it, it wasn't by much. So that is our first one. I hope you liked it. I'm going to check my comments here. Hey, Joyce is here. Hi, Joyce. And Doris, good to see you. I love when you guys join me for lunch. Yeah, Sandy says, gotta love those creative granddaughters. Her does it too. You know, it's amazing what they find to play with. But yeah, I just think we're making young crafters. So she can play with anything she wants up here. So that is our first card. Now for the next card, I am going to, let me get my parts here. My next card, I'll use the sailboat. So on this card, this was pretty much everything from the New Horizons. The mountains, the saying, that was all in the New Horizons suite. But for this one, I am using the words from the New Horizon, but I'm using the dies for the words and the sailboat from the um, sailing home, from this other one. So now I'm starting to combine the two. So with this card here, what I'm gonna do, let me give you your measurements. You have your base piece, which is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. We'll just, again, pretend I have a bone folder. Thank you, Tyler Joe. Then I have this piece here, Blackberry Bliss, that is four inches by five and a quarter. Then I have the sailboat that I've cut. And when I did the sailboat, I did that on the shimmery white because I wanted just a little bit of a shimmer to it. And I'm also gonna color this with, um, not my blending pens, with my uh, blends, my blending pens here. And I think with it being a shimmery white, there's like a coating on there. So I think my color moves along a lot better than if it was just on the basic white. And then I have my label here, my stitch label. And again, this is all from the Sailing Home set. Now this I did cut down because when I made my card, I realized I am gonna use all that water, but I also wanted to have just a very, very small edge on this Blackberry Bliss. So originally it was four by six. I just took an eighth, I mean, yeah, I just took an eighth inch off on the four. So it's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. That's the size. I just went ahead and cut it because I knew it would be the same. Um, but that's this piece of your designer paper. So to put this together, I'm going to take my designer paper first. Actually, let's start with our sailboat. I have my sailboat, and when I first did the sailboat, I did it with the blends. Um, I don't know if it was a petal pink, whatever I used. I think it was pale papaya. And it didn't look right because I wanted to pick up this rich razzleberry but my rich Razzleberry blend was just too dark. 
wasn't gonna cut it. So what I did is I took my Rich Razzleberry ink pad, I squeezed it so I get some of that ink on the top, and then I took my blending pen, and I am um, blender pen, and I'm going to color the sail. Because I wanted that beautiful Rich Razzleberry, but I just didn't want it to be too dark. So again, it moves around really nicely on the shimmery white. Put it this way. And then I'll get this sail over here. It's a gorgeous color, it's a very deep color. And see, I could just pull that color right up in here without making it too loud. And then I can come back a little bit here in the shadowed areas to pull some of that out. So that's how I colored my sail. Back in the day, that was one of the basic ways we colored all the time. So I have the Rich Razzleberry Sail. And then I did use my blends, the Smoky Slate. I have the light and I have the dark. So I came in here with the light. I love that there is a fine tip and a um, broader tip because a fine tip is what I needed for this. And then I came in on the bottom with the dark. Give it a little bit of contrast in there. And I'll get the back of the boat there. Now in this, it does have water. I didn't want the water because I'm using the water on my designer paper. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to kind of cut these little waves off. Still leaving just a little bit of white because you can see the white, you know, goes throughout. But I love how the die also cuts this inside out piece here. So that is my um, sailboat. I'm gonna to wait to put it on. And then I'm going to do the relax and enjoy your day. I think that's a great tip for all of us. So here I'll take the words and this is from New Horizons. I'm going to stamp that. And when I first put it on the card, I felt like it was just too stark, you know, just to have this white. So I went ahead and sponged it up a little bit and I've been using my blends to do that. I think you can use a sponge dauber too, um, but the blends just makes it a little softer. So with these blending brushes, what I did is when you first do it, it's a little stark and I wanted it softer. So just tap it on the back and then just really lightly Get in the center. These little hairs are great. Very lightly just go around the edge. And I thought that would kind of bring that water in on the label too and not make it so stark white. And I am doing that with the Misty Moonlight. So now I can kind of put this together. I'm gonna to stamp, just lay this out so I can kind of see where I wanna put my birds. I love the birds that come flying across. So with them, I'm using the um, Memento Black. And go light when you're inking your pads so that it's not all in between. And when I put this down, I also, when I put them up here, just hold it for a second. I find I get a darker image if I just don't push down and pull right up, but you don't want to rock it and you don't want to push hard. Just hold it for a second. A light hand is always best. You'll hear me say it time and time again when stamping, but sometimes I think holding it there kind of makes sure that ink gets on there instead of just kissing it like that. So what I'm gonna do here is I will take this and I will mount this on my Blackberry Bliss. Now with the Blackberry Bliss, with this being such a fine border, I do sometimes like cutting it to a 16th of an inch because I want this designer paper to be offset by this dark ridge, but I don't want the dark ridge to overpower it. So when I do that, I really, really like using a liquid glue because I have just a few seconds to move it around. 
where if you're going to use your stamp and seal, y'all know how great and strong that is, makes it a lot tougher. So I'll just put this on here. And again, when it's on there, I can look at it. I can move it. And then when I like it, push it down. So I'm gonna take this and I will tape this to the front of this card, my card base. So Joyce says she loves the New Horizons set and she has not purchased it yet. Are you gonna purchase it now, Joyce? <laughs> it really is gorgeous. Really, really is gorgeous and easy to make your cards. Again, I wish I had all day to stay up here and play today, but sadly, I am, uh, we're meeting with our financial guy and hoping that our retirement accounts are in good shape. It's a crazy world out there, so you just don't know. Joyce said, yes, yes, yes. She's going to purchase it now. You will love it, Joyce. You know I won't steer you wrong. So I will put this here. And then for this, I will go ahead and put some dimensionals right there. I use the bigger dimensionals on the back of my label. And when I take this, I have the relax and enjoy your day. And you can also take, even though this was shimmery white, um, when I put the ink over it, it covers a little bit of it. So also take that wink of Stella and hit these sails again. And if you want, hit a little bit of this water on the edge. I think it just brings it to life. Let me try my other one. Wink of Stella is the craziest thing. It's like, you know, eventually they do get used up, but doggone if you can't throw them out. You just got to keep saving them and keep trying. Okay, that's much better. So I wish the Wink of Stella came over on the camera. Sadly, it doesn't. But this is the second part. Let me put these here. So now we are rolling and we are on to our third card. So for the third card, again, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put words on here. So I'm going to ask you guys what you think. Um, the only thing I could think I didn't want it to take away is this little banner with the word breathe. So let me know if you think, yes, if you think it needs the words, no, if you don't think it needs the words. So on this card, the New Horizons, of course, it's the paper, the little rocks, Love, love, love the dye of this fence. And then from the um, uh, sailing home, from the sailing home, I used the, um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank. It's not a windmill. Lighthouse, lighthouse, very good. Whew, I need to eat lunch sometimes before we do this. So I'm going to get the um, lighthouse and the birds come from that. And this little die here comes from Sailing Home, but the words come from the New Horizon. So to make this, let me give you your measurements. So for your measurements here, you have eight and a half by five and a half inch, scored at four and a quarter, Bumblebee. Now Bumblebee is one of the retiring colors that is going out on March 23rd. So please, 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 with the bumblebee, with all those other in colors, the 20 to 2022 in colors, please purchase them now because we know they are not going to stay with us. So you need your pads, re-inkers definitely if you have the pads, cardstock, the ribbon, please get it all now because it seems like, okay, you know you can get them now, but all of a sudden that retiring list hits and people go crazy and it's gone in no time. So please don't delay. So there's your card base. Then I have a four and an eighth by five and three eighths inch piece of Cajun Craze. And again, it's a little bit of a um, crazy number. It wasn't by the quarters because I just want that light trim for the designer paper, four by six. And again, this was one that I left long because I wanted to see where my birds are, where my lighthouse goes before I start trimming this up. So once I have it together, then I'll trim it to five and a quarter. You have a lighthouse and you have this fence. 
So to get started, we are going to do our fence and our lighthouse first. And then I'll see what everybody says, whether we should put words on there or not. So from here, in the New Horizons, you also have this stamp, and it actually looks like a wood grain. And I like it a lot because this is um, punched out of crumb cake, but I want a little texture in there. So I'm just gonna stamp this. And it actually is so cool because it puts that grain texture on my fence. Let me show you, I don't know if you could see that or not. I'll try to hold it up here. But now it's just not the flat crumb cake. Oops, I don't know if you can see it or not. It has some texture in there. Yep, yep, you could see it, good. So that is my fence. Now for my lighthouse, I'm gonna take the light crumb cake blend and with a light hand, I do like using the broad end of color. And I'm just gonna come down here See how easy it is? And I love the blends because they don't leave streaks. You know, it just all does what it says. It blends it together. Let me turn that. So that's my crumb cake. And then I like using the um, light Cajun craze. Just kind of gave it a, a different, a lot of lighthouses you see are blue. Nothing wrong with that, but I didn't think blue would go with this. So this is Colleen's Lighthouse. And again, just color this in. Very easy to do. And I do wanna put just a little bit of shading on my lighthouse. So kinda of the way the light's showing. So I'm just gonna come in here. And you can see on the stamps a lot of times where to shade. So I do like that. And then to bring that in again, I like to come back with the light. That's, I think that's kind of what gives you almost that medium, the medium color. Okay. So there is my lighthouse. I forgot to color the little top. I'm gonna color this right here. And one of the things I love about the lighthouse is when you take your wink of Stella and you come in here, it makes it look like glass when you have the sparkle there. So I'm gonna put that in my two little windows. Now to put this together, I'm gonna to take that New Horizons. And I didn't want the grass. I probably could have colored that green and I think it would have come in okay. This is garden green. But I really just wanted the lighthouse itself. So I'm just gonna come in here and just trim off that grass since it's already in the grass. So this will go here. And I'll get a couple dimensionals to put that on. Two. Sometimes I wish we met by Zoom so we could be talking back and forth when I create. I get to watch your comments, but um, it'd be more fun if it was like interactive and you were here. So here I have my lighthouse. And for the fence, one of the things I wanted to do on the fence, I didn't really want it flat, although that could work. I wanted it a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit rounded. And it's not gonna hurt it when it's in a card and then it pops back up, I mean in an envelope, but then it'll pop back up. So what I did there is I kind of bent it a little bit just to soften it up. Then I took my Tombow liquid glue, put a little bit on this post. And here, I just kind of lined it up to where there's like two little pieces here. So I put this down and I'm gonna give it just a minute. Here's my little damp cloth, handy dandy. 
It's really not a cloth, it's a paper towel, but it still works. So I have my fence and I'll give it just a second to set up. In fact, while that sets up, I'll stamp my birds. So the birds, this is a smaller set of birds because it's from the sailing home. So I'm just gonna take my black memento. I will put them here. And then when I go to do my other fence, again, the other side, I'm not putting glue all on here. I'm only putting it on this last post. So when I pull this back, it goes on my last post. And then I just kind of make sure it's poked up a little bit, but then put that down. And then when that dries, if you can see that, it's raised up just a little bit. And it's nice and it's flexible. So when you do put it in an envelope, it will be fine. Now, as I said, I'm gonna cut this one down. And the reason was, I didn't wanna cut it too short and then I couldn't fit my birds in or did I just have too much grass. So I have to cut it from the six inches to the five and a quarter. And I think I am gonna cut some of that grass off. Let me go this way. And I have told you before, but with the Stampin' Up! cutter, there is a little magnet right here. And if you're trying to open it in the middle like I used to, you're wondering why this gets stuck. It's a magnet, so it holds it flat when you're moving your cutter around. This thing isn't flopping all over the place. So there's a little groove here. When you open your cutter, open it by the top, because that's where that magnet is. And again, my tip, I've told you before, I took the tear and, uh, tear and tape. We have tear and tape, but actually you put it down and you, well, you pull this strip off, put it down and you pull the other strip off and it's sticky on both sides. But what I did, it's only a quarter inch, so it's perfect. I actually taped it to the back of my numbers. See how this is here? And the reason I did that, because it was so much easier to see my numbers with a white backing than it was to see it through the clear acrylic. So I just uh, took one side of the tape off, put it on here, and just never took the rest off. And that is my tip for the day. And let me tell you, if your eyes are over 40, it's a good tip. So cutting this, again, I'm gonna end up doing like five and a quarter, so I don't wanna cut too much off. Um, I think I will. I'm looking at my five and a quarter here, so I know it would be like that. I don't wanna do quite that much, so I will take I'm over five and a quarter now, but I'm just trimming off some of the grass. And then I'm gonna come this way, and now I will put it on five and a quarter, and it's only gonna take a little bit of those birds off. And I, again, I, I waited to do that so I could make sure I had this spaced evenly the way I wanted it. So I will take that four and an eighth, five and three eighths inch piece of Cajun Craze. That's gonna go on there with a nice little edge. Let's see. So Sandy said, great tip about the cutter. You see, Sandy and I are about the same age. I think I got her by a year or two. But our birthdays are in June, so we always celebrate together. And so Sandy's eyes are over 42, so she knows. <laughs> right, Sandy? <laughs> And if you have to pull your fence up a little bit, just put something small under there like your snips. So you have this here. I am going to take my stamp and seal. I have to probably pull that fence up again, but it's fine. And then this is going on my bumblebee. I really, I was kind of deciding what colors to pull um, from this paper. There's a lot of different colors that go with the New Horizons, but I chose Cajun Craze because I wanted to pick it up from my lighthouse. And then, of course, it's just that little bit of bumblebee to draw in that sky. So now we're gonna get those cool little stones. Let me find them. I don't know if y'all know this, but whenever you're doing a video, like you have stuff everywhere. 
It looks, you try to keep it looking nice right here, but it's like a, a bomb went off everywhere else. But that's okay. So now that I have my little stones here, I can take them and put them around my fence. I'm so glad these stones came in. The sea glass are also very popular and they should be in in April. They're just really cool embellishments that we really haven't had till now. And everybody is loving them and you just can't blame them. I think I want one more little gray. And they're all, you know, they're different shapes, so that's kind of cool too. I think I'll put a gray one down there. So there I have the pebbles enamel shapes. And let me see what the verdict was. What was the verdict as far as words or no word? Let me uh let me check my comments here. Let me see. Peggy says, don't need the words, love the background. Let me get my other comments. Huh, just us are showing up. Peggy, you might be the deciding vote. <laughs> I don't know why. On my laptop is what I'm looking at. So on my laptop, it says there's 30 comments, but I can only see Peg's. Peggy, I guess you win. She says that the paper is just so pretty, um, she would leave it like that. So Chantel, hey Chantel. Chantel says no words also. It's beautiful on its own. And Mary Peterson likes the makes the fence look so good. Okay, so we will leave words off. And then if you do have a card like this, if you have a birthday, an anniversary, or something, you can always put some small words here or up here. But I think by habit, we're so used to having words actually on our um, card that sometimes it's okay that you don't. I really believe that. So let me show you the cards again, all the ones we made today. We made this one. Let me come down and see where my screen is. There we go. We made this one. We made this. And we made this fun, quick, easy. And again, remember when I started, I just took the six by six paper and cut it four inches by six because I knew this was going to be four inches. You know, that part's not going to change. I just wanted the freedom to use wherever I wanted. So I created my artwork and that's when I trimmed it down to five and a quarter. And there again. You have these beautiful strips left over since you cut it at four inches. You have these two inch strips. So then you just go and make a card like this. There is your two inch strip. And then you can layer them that you want from the New Horizon, just the grass and the birds. That's really all that needed. And then I did have the breathe. So Sandy says, let me see. If you have to have words, I think it would be pretty to stamp them directly in the sky instead of on the banner. You know, it's funny, Sandy, because I did that. Of course, it's not in the sky. So I did that with this one, um, but not the other. And you know what, Sandy? It's our day today. Let's try it. Let's try it. So I would use the Cajun craze, but I don't know if it would show enough. Let me see if I have the word breathe. Here we go. Let's just do it with the black, and then maybe that will bring the birds in. And if it doesn't work, Sandy, this will be the card I send you. How's that? <laughs> Oh, Lori says no words. Um, yes, the two-inch strip of the card is good. Well, Sandy, we're going to do it because I still have one if I decide I don't like it or I'll put something else over it. So y'all hold your breath, although this says breathe. I'm going to stamp it, hold it for just a minute, and breathe. So there you go. And if you like that, Sandy, I will send you that card. So these are the cards today. Again, I hope you all like them. This is a great suite to work with. It's so easy. So if you are interested in purchasing any of these products, please go to my blog, um, creatingwithcolleen.com. There is a shop button there. You um, can shop. I'm open 24 seven. And then you can also, um, if you don't get my newsletter, please um, apply for that because we have a lot of sales, a lot of different things going on with Stampin' Up! right now. And I include that in my newsletters. So just go there to request my newsletter. And you can see all of my videos on my Creating with Colleen Magnus YouTube channel. So, uh, oh, she said, I'll take any card from you. I think it looks good. Sandy and I also really enjoy, we, we had more of the same taste. We were a group that got together and stamped. Um, 
every month before she moved. And her and I really, I think uh, we kind of inspired each other because I loved your cards too, Sandy. So I appreciate you so much for joining me. That is the beauty of a live um, and all this crazy technology that is always so hard for me because we can all be together, even if it's virtually. So thank you, Joyce. Thank you all. I will be back next Wednesday when we do some more cards. Um, golly day, there's just so many gorgeous coastal sets we have. So we'll just keep creating through the month of March and hopefully by April, we might be able to sneak a couple beach days in here in Virginia. So God bless you all and I hope you have a wonderful day and make sure you do something creative this week. Bye-bye.